this is only a vlog. Uh, I want to talk about, tell something about the new project that I want to work on. Uh, when you have followed my channel, you uh, could see that during the making of the very simple oscilloscope, this beautiful, beautiful sine wave oscillator from Farnell that I bought on a radio flea market, say approximately eight years ago for say approximately uh, 30 euros went broke. And that's a big pain. Uh, it was a extremely high quality product of course it's from Farnell. Farnell is one of the best uh, manufacturers in electronics. Anyway I could not repair it. Um, of course I perhaps I could repair it but anyway uh, that could have um, taken a lot of time. So I'm gonna make another circuit from it. By the way, the aim is, of course, to make a sine wave oscillator. But uh, in this case, in this final oscillator, uh, there were no coils inside. So it was, an, as far as I could see, an RC uh, sine wave oscillator. And I also could see an, an op amp, etc. etc. So I think it was a quite uh, elaborated pro product from those days, say 15 years ago or so anyway, I don't know that exactly. So I'm going to repair it in a very primitive way and the, the very very good thing is that we have this beautiful tuning capacitor here. Here is the dial. So uh, for a radio hobbyist there can be nothing more good then such a setup. And of course, um, I'm absolutely sure that the dial in the future, when I make this oscillator, will not fit any longer exactly. But of course, you can connect a, a frequency counter to it. So, again, beautiful, beautiful uh, sine wave oscillator from Farnell and inside the top quality um, uh, tuning capacitor with this beautiful dial. Anyway, so what were the things to do? Um, this will be, by the way, the way that I am going to use the uh, here the five switches here and each switch will uh, be connected to a certain coil. This circuit is by the way on my YouTube channel field effect transistor oscillator that can work between say 50 kilohertz and 12 megahertz. I want to give the link in the description so not necessary here to show the complete schematic, but anyway, only want to say, talk about the uh, basic setup. These were my first ideas. Make coils in this frequency band, 30 kc up to 150 kilo cycles. The problem with that frequency band is that you often need a ferrite rod inside the coil. And the coil has a lot of winding, say in the order of 100, 300, etc. Um, and in this range we are talking about 150 kilocycles up to 400 kilocycles. Also often a ferrite rod must be used to get into that frequency band. And here the other um, ranges that I had as a first ID, but finally I got to uh, these five. Of course, I have only five switches here. 
two five frequency bands that could be useful. So perhaps I have to use here a ferrite core, uh, perhaps also here for 100 kc up to 8 kc, 800 kc, of course. 0 0.8 mc and here perhaps I also need here a ferrite core and here I don't need any longer a ferrite core uh, because the inductance of these coils on the on this frequency two mega cycles up to say 12 mega cycles is low say 100 micro Henry and I only uh, 100 micro Henry to approximately 10 micro Henry and I only say give a very very coarse indication when I tell this correct me if I'm wrong anyway um, here is that beautiful tuning capacitor good thing is that it has two sections so I can switch the two sections in parallel both are as far as I can see 500 picofarad so the uh, total capacitance could be between approximately 20 uh, picofarad and approximately 1000 picofarad at its highest or say 10 picofarad up to approximately 500 picofarad so that's the reason why I will use this switch here so that I can switch in the uh, one um, combination of plates so these plates and with a switch I can add these plates so totally 1000 picofarad that's very high by the way and you can surely reach with a tuning capacitor of approximately 10 or 20 picofarad up to 1000 picofarad you can surely get to this frequency range uh, I know that from practice, doing experiments, etc, etc. But for the highest frequencies, say uh, in the 12 mega cycle range, uh, a, a capacitor of maximum 500 picofarad is somewhat high. But you can of course, say, turn the plates out, I'm going to do that now. So. Now it is, for instance, one section is 500 picofarad. And now we go to say 300 picofarad, approximately 200 picofarad, one section. And finally, when the uh, capacitor plates are completely moved out, and this is a high, very high quality capacitor used by Farnall in those days, the capacitance is say set by the uh, the distance between the plates and the surface of the plates and that is as far as I can see very very low so now we are I think we are now on approximately 20 picofarad turning the plates in we are on here approximately 50 picofarad 100 picofarad, etc., etc. So that was all to tell. Um, furthermore, I want to use these switches. These are, in fact, switches that are used for audio purposes. Uh, that that could not have to be a problem in the original setup of this final uh, frequency um, generator because they did not use coils. They used uh, resistors, etc. And uh, in that case, the, say, the distance between the contacts uh, doesn't matter in a certain way. But because now I'm going to use coils, it could be that there is here, for instance, between the contacts of these switches, a minimum capacitance in the order of 2 picofarad. So, that's the reason why I scrape this all very, very clean um, to, say, diminish the stray capacitance. 
perhaps that's somewhat overdone and I'm more or less sure that it is somewhat overdone but when when you go to the highest frequencies say in the order of 12 mega cycles here it could be that the stray capacitance between the contacts of this um, switch starts to play a role and it surely starts to play a role above approximately 15 megahertz then there the, the contact um, the stray capacitance between the contacts starts to play a role even if it is say 2 picofarad or 3 picofarad it could have an effect anyway that was my experience during the, the years thanks for watching it's only a vlog and when everything works fine I will make another video and of course say uh, more or less nothing will be left of the original schematic so it is say refurbished in an extreme primitive way uh, but also in a way that uh, say damaging uh, will not happen any longer also one of the aims of my circuits thanks for watching